Hey, good day to you all Gilbert students. Uh, today is Sunday the um, 20th and i um, going through my weekly recording of um, my slide presentation. Listen, I went all out for this one. Well, for me, all out, at least to start with, this is going, um, I don't know, I tried a bunch of different things, animations and stuff like that. Um, I'm not saying it's good. And you should definitely probably read uh, the module 1.4, um, but uh, I just wanted to, whoops, stop that out. I just wanted to uh, make sure that you guys, um, uh, you know, have something that can hopefully draw you in, um, get you a little excited. All right, so today we're gonna be talking about the Neolithic Revolution, okay? Time. All right. So check this out, right? We humans start off as these nomadic hunter gatherer people, right? They moved around, they followed the herds. Um, you know, maybe they moved, well, they, it was definitely for season because the herds were moving too. Okay. So, um, one thing that that allowed for was survival, obviously, right? Because they're, they're getting the food they need. Okay. But the other thing that it allowed for the time, it allowed for um, for them to develop skills, right? New hunting skills. Um, it helped them develop new knowledge, technology, right? And that is super important. Um, so, I just wanted to uh, uh, to share that with you guys, right? Time for 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 the for the early human is what's going to allow them to trial and error things and get them to the Neolithic revolution or the agri first agricultural revolution. Okay. All right. Mesopotamia and the invention of agriculture. Here we go. Boom. Yeah, there it is right there, right? All this nice light green area. Okay. If you notice, you got the Tigris river here on one side, the Euphrates river here on the other side. And those two rivers are really what makes this area so rich and lush, right? Um, the rivers would flood. Uh, after they flooded and receded, it would leave behind this nice, rich silt. Um, and and, this, and then the soil was really nice. So it was really nice to, uh, um, to grow things in, to live, and so forth. Okay? Um, so this is where supposedly where the neolithic revolution is going to start right because this is one of the um um this is one of the places they find some of the first artifacts and things like that okay um i don't know what just oh i went the wrong way that's what happened i'm so sorry people there we go this is also called the new stone age my picture is in the way at the moment okay it's also what we would call the new stone age okay um, during this time, people are going to trade in their nomadic lifestyle, their unpredictable lifestyle, and they're going to start settling down in one place. Okay. I don't understand what's happening here. Here we go. Okay. So <laughs> how are they going to do that? How are they going to figure out how to do that? Okay. Um, well, uh, end of the Ice Age has to happen first, okay? You have to have the end of the Ice Age, otherwise you're not going to get, um, you're not going to get the Ag Revolution. So, uh, check this out. Back in the day, when we're hunter-gatherers, okay, the people, the, the guys would go out hunting, the ladies would gather the food and bear, or the, the grains and berries and things like that. Now, when they processed the grains, crushed it up, or did whatever they did, they would toss out the leftover stuff, okay, and then they'd move on, right? They'd stay in a place for so long, but then they'd move on, okay? Over time, what would happen, especially as the temperature started to ride, or rise, excuse me, they'd come back and they'd be like, hey, there's stuff growing here. It wasn't here before because after a while they learn their spots, right? They're, they're, they're coming back to the similar spots over and over again. So they're learning their spots and, and they come back and they're like, dang, what's up? This stuff grew, right? And it was the ladies that were throwing the stuff out. So 
there's no proof in this, but this is my this is my educated guess based on evidence and, and history. I think that the ladies um, were like, hey, um, you know, this is where we throw out seeds all the time. I wonder. So what they do is an experiment. Maybe they toss out the seeds in a specific way and pay attention. Really good. At, they maybe, maybe they mark it some way. And when they come back the next time, the next season or whatnot, it's grown. And then boom, they're like, hey, dang, we can, we can plant a whole bunch of this. And when we get here, it's going to be here when we come back, right? Okay. So that's, I th believe, how the, 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 uh, um, the revolution started, right? You've got warming temperatures, and then you've got, you've got the nomadic people figuring out that if they plant seeds, they'll grow and they can start to stay in one place. And if they can stay in one place, they can grow even more food and it'll be even better because then they're going to figure out domestication of animals, right? Okay. All right. Where am I at here? Okay. So first examples, um, I don't understand why this isn't moving. Okay. First examples of um, agricultural societies. Um, let me back up a slide. Two here. Let me just explain something real quick what this is. Okay. First, a couple um, a couple uh, of things about the ag revolution. Okay. Not only did it include growing crops, but it also included, as you can see here, like the domestication of animals, right? You've got, obviously, I don't, come on. They probably didn't have llamas uh, quite yet, or, or maybe they did, I don't know. But they, they started to domesticate animals. They figured, oh, if we can pin them up and, and um, you know, they're not grown in the wild, then we can raise them for our own food. Eventually, they're going to figure out, hey, we can use these for more than food, right? Like, like maybe they... Uh, the first cow they domesticate, they see how strong it is, or the first horse, and and they they're like, dang, maybe they can pull a cart when they figure the wheel out. That is, um, I hope that makes sense to you guys. Make sure you're you know writing down questions if you have any questions. Um, and then this right here, this is um, one of the very first um, farming techniques they used when they settled down. They would they would level whole areas of trees take out the stumps, then they would burn it all, and, and they'd use the ashes on top to fertilize the soil. Um, it's actually not too bad for the soil um, if you don't you know, have a ton of it. Okay? It actually um, uh, makes the soil better. Okay? So that's called slash and burn farming. Okay? So those are some of the first things, right? Uh, a farming technique, or the first farming technique, and then, and then you have um, um, the ag revolution. Okay? Now let me back here. Okay. So one of the very first farming villages they found um, is called Yarmo, okay? And it's in northern Iraq. So let's, so it's going to be up in here, okay? Um, they, uh, they found um, examples of um, tilling. They found remains of grains and animals. Um, they found... Uh, rye, wheat, lentils, barley, um, uh, a farming lifestyle, okay? So they also found remains of sheep and pig and goats and horses, okay? Um, so it's a good possibility um, that people were there about 9,000-ish years ago, okay? And so farming, right? Farming would, on a pretty decent scale, would have taken place that long ago, okay? Um, the next really awesome example um, before written history that they found um, of, of farming, a farming village, was Cattle Hayek. And now that's in central Turkey. So go back up here. That's going to be right about in here. Okay. So um, that city had five to 6,000 people. Um, it did not have walls. Okay. But I'll show you a picture of those in just a second. Here's a picture of Yarmo. Maybe. Here's a picture of Yarmo. You have um, the outlines and things like that, uh, and and you can the 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 
The fields are going to be on the outside of the village, okay? They're not going to have them on the inside, okay? Here's a picture of Cattle Hayek. No, um, I don't think I've got another one, but Cattle Hayek is really interesting. Um, they lived a lot on top of the, the roofs of their places, and then they had ladders that went down in through the roof. Um, that was kind of their protection. They didn't have any walls, okay? But what this, what this specific city shows us is that it was more than just a farming village. Um, it showed us that there was a little bit of record keeping. It showed us that they had different jobs, like religious jobs, okay? Because you find, um, you find things like religious goddesses um, or little statuettes of goddesses, um, which I'll show you in a minute, okay? Um, but it wasn't just, um, it wasn't just that um, that you find there, okay? You also found new challenges, okay? There's going to be some cultural advances and shifts. Uh, it's going to go to um, more of a hierarchical society, okay, where men are in charge and, and they are really in charge of the protection and the farming. Um, and the women stay home and they watch the children, okay? Now, women were subservient in this society. However, women were not in any way, shape, or form unimportant. Because the, God, the the statuettes that they found, now this is not one of those statuettes, this is a different one, but it's a female statuette, okay? Uh, but the statuettes that they found were of female goddesses, okay? Uh, and they believed that this female goddess was in charge of making sure that they had good grain harvests and things like that. That shows um, that women were extremely important to um, society. Okay, they weren't just there to take care of the of the babies. Okay, they 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 worshipped a woman goddess. All right. Again, men were in charge of the farming as well as the protection. So that's why I have the military guys here. But there are also new problems that that came about. Okay. Well, let me back up. Okay. Along with these cultural advances, right? I talked about new jobs. Not everybody's going to be able to farm, right? There's going to have to be professional soldiers. There's going to have to be religious people. Um, they're going to need record keepers because they've got they've got um, they've got a, a, a basically a village, right? They're going to have to have, probably have some sort of some sort of government. Um, probably nothing like we've seen now, but um, some sort of government, right? Um, so they're going to have the opportunity to do more things. Okay, so. Again, along with the advances, there's also new issues that they have to face, right? So there's no walls, okay? So that means looting, right? If there's still nomadic, nomadic tribes that are around, which there are, and they are strong, they can come in and loot just about any time they want to. Um, if you don't know what looting is, it basically means you come in and steal stuff, okay? Natural disasters are a big one, right? Um, they've got to contend with all kinds of different natural disasters, maybe earthquakes, right? They're in the mountains in central Turkey, a beautiful place, but still in the mountains, good possibility for earthquakes. Okay, so there's, there's, there's an, an example of a natural disaster that could happen. Fire, right? You're in close proximity with other people. Someone's uh, little cook fire in their, in their hut gets out of control and boom, it can light up the whole place, right? Fire. When you're a nomadic tribe, that's not as big of a problem. Floods, another big problem, right? Um, again, if you're too close to the river or whatnot and it floods, so they have to learn about things like that. And, and we talk, uh, uh, there's good and bad with that. Like the Egyptians, they actually figure the floods out and they make, make their calendar uh, partly based off that so they can know when um, the floods are going to be and stuff like that and how far away they can um, go from the Nile River safely to um, put their cities. And droughts, right? Droughts is another thing. If you're a farming or an agricultural society and there's droughts, your stuff's not going to grow. I mean, it's just as simple as that, right? So those are some new things um, that they face. Eventually, around 5,000 um, BC, they are going to abandon the city, okay? Uh, it's possible because of climate change, um, maybe some looting, maybe they just got tired of looting and things like that. But for some reason, 
they left. They just left the city. I'm curious, what are your thoughts? Why do you think they left the city? Do some research. Let me know what you think. Okay. Now, the early settlements, they provide a great insight to experts regarding the life in the Stone Age or the agricultural revolution period. Okay. But not very many preserved remains have been found. Okay. In 1991, however, they get this dude, the Iceman or Ozi, uh, Otzi. Otzi, okay, and they find him. He's been like frozen in ice for a ton of years, okay, like 5,000 years, which is pretty amazing that he is preserved this well. I mean, if you look, if you look closely at that, 5,000 years, I mean, we'd bury something in our backyard and it's gone in 10 years or less maybe okay anyway so um they estimate this dude's age at 25 to 35 years old he measures about five foot two so he's a little guy maybe maybe 110 pounds and they go off of bone density and things like that that's how they figure that um he had a six foot long bow with him 14 arrows a deer skin case holding a copper bladed axe which is you know they haven't made it to the um, to the iron yet. Yeah, they haven't quite got there, but so a copper bladed ax, a medicine bag, some cereal grains, a small flint dagger and a wooden sheath or woven sheath, excuse me. Okay. He had stitched together deer hides and Ibex hides as well as leather shoes stuffed with grass. Okay. Now experts originally thought he died of exposure. However, x-rays revealed that there was a, a an arrow wound in his left shoulder. Um, and um, they also, they also revealed, um, that they also revealed that, uh, he was a farmer. They also revealed that he was a farmer. Sorry about that. Um, so, um, so we have that. And then those are some of the things that they figured out. Okay. That also helps them confirm that parts of Europe, Central Europe actually, were permanently settled. So if we look, let's see. Ooh. Come on. There we go. We're talking way up here, way farther up north than this, okay? Because they, they found him up here, okay? Now, let's come back here. <laughs> That's the problem with having so many things is that, you know, okay, but there's more, okay? There is more. Look at this. The earth is still spinning. While Mesopotamia is the region known to have the earliest transition to agricultural settlements, other parts of the world are going to make the shift between 8,000 and 5,000 BC. Okay. Um, wheat and barley are going to spring up in Egypt, Southeastern Europe, Southwest Asia and India. Um, beans and squash and maize in, are going to come in Mesoamerica. So Mexico and Central America and then um, where the Incas were in Peru and Chile. Okay. Um, also in South, uh, Southeast Asia, you got yams or you, you also have those things, rice being farmed in Central Asia or South, excuse me, Southeast Asia. So around China, Vietnam, those areas. Okay. Um, river Valley areas. All right. Uh, in Central Africa, you're going to find yams and bananas that were starting to be grown. Um, not just you know, when, you know, here and there, but like farmed. Okay. So the rise and spread of these Neolithic peoples and their traditions and agricultural methods across the globe is going to change the history of the world forever. Okay. Populations are going to explode. Technology, people are going to start to interact. Um, uh, 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 technology and ideas are going to explode, right? Eventually China is going to share gunpowder with um, with, uh, uh, the West and who knows, maybe if they don't, America is not conquered by Europeans, but that's a question for a whole nother time. And I, and I think we'll have a good debate on that too, or at least a good discussion. So let me know what you guys think about this. Um, it's a very important time in history. Okay. The first agricultural revolution, it's going to lead step by step, uh, to where we are today. Hey, thanks a lot, guys. Let me know if you have questions. Have a great day.
I'm trying to pause it. 